Jess has been here before and she's got a secret admirer. No, not again. Better out than in, I always say. Iceberg, straight ahead. Got a little something on it. She got a little ring, ring around the rosy. <laughs> Oof, I dreaded that. I'm kind of glad it's over. Hello, MTV. Welcome to my crib. It's moist. Moist. Real moist. So Jess got lots of good news last week, didn't you? Yeah, I did. What's the big, what's the big, big news that you got? So the big news is I got an email saying I am guaranteed res for next year. Woohoo! So that was my big concern, just because... That's why you waited a year. Yeah, I want to be able to go res. Morning, you guys. It's way day again already. So I did do this yesterday. I kind of got the gates back up. Um, and I put the other gate across there. So I do have a little holding pen for whoever is ready to get um, to get sold. I'm gonna probably ship them tonight. Uh, and then after I'm done taking them to the sales barn, I actually have to run to my neighbors. He's gonna look at my trailer and do some long overdue maintenance, which is really nice. Yeah, I think this week though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start actually decreasing my minimum weight. So I think I'm gonna aim for 100 pounds and up instead of 105. Usually I do 105 pounds. I sometimes wonder if I just, if I just let them go in on their own. Sometimes they go in better. funny when you clean out a barn how much smaller my lambs look. I assure you they're not. They weighed up really well. So I have 36 ready to go. But they're a lot smaller <laughs> than they were a week ago. Uh, no, not really. Just the floor lowered. I'll just go over some stats real quick with you guys. I don't know if you like it. Most of you have said you didn't mind this part. And I like just keep keeping myself accountable. So, okay, so we had 36, minimum weight was 100. Like I said, I was gonna do 100 and over. Maximum was only 113. So a nice tight range, with which, which is an average of 106 pounds um, total for this group. Heaviest average weight looks to be the steel-sired lambs with an average of 107. And then the rest were, so it was 107, 106, 106, 105. So they were like tight very tight group uh, there is likely a trailer left which was kind of my that was kind of my strategy I was hoping to get a trailer load this week which leaves only one more then I can clean out that side next week clean that whole entire side out I will be bringing over perhaps the bottle lambs and Miles's pen first maybe even this week while I've got Carissa I haven't decided yet uh, put them in here, get them used to the pen, used to the feeders, used to the water, and then they can train the new ones uh, that are going to be coming over here in the next week, week and a half uh, on these water. I find, like, monkey see, monkey do, that the, the lambs can train other lambs. I cannot believe I loaded 36 lambs by myself. They went on really, really well. So I am going to make the trek to the sales barn right now. Uh, Jess is in the field. Mark's still in the field. Uh, I think Mark is cultivating. I think we talked about that in the last video, uh, trying to smooth some of these farms out. I'm going to run to town, come back, drop off this trailer. It is acting up. Hopefully he will get all my gremlins worked out and my trailer will be back to uh, tip-top shape. 
me see. Oh, that feel there pops. Don't eat grass. Oh, oh no, not again. You feel better? Better out than in, I always say. I think that's just a leaky cylinder, Jess. And then, by that, yeah. Does it swing under? I think we just leave it. Just like that and just swing Slide it under? under. And I think. Oh, that works out good. And so it begins. Mm. Good morning. From the Brock girls, we are on a run to get some fungicide something for the wheat we're just running to our neighbors which is about 10 minutes away not even and mark is just getting ready to begin planting soybeans this is our first field of 2021 for soybeans which is kind of awesome we're gonna pick up this stuff bring it home and then we're gonna jump on the roller we're gonna roll uh, some ground that was worked we have to preserve moisture now because now they're they've completely turned the forecast around and it's looking like everything's gonna dry out so we've got some pretty worked ground that we want to preserve as much moisture as we can so we're gonna go over that with the roller we're gonna pick some stones if we see stones and then when Mark's done planting we're probably gonna have to pull the roller over where he's been yeah eventually yeah. eventually <laughs> fun fact uh, where we go get this stuff Jess has been here before and she's got a secret admirer oh my god she's got a little doggy that has fallen in love with her leg <laughs> So annoying. So she, so she calls it little Humper. <laughs> humper, stay away. Don't and even think last about time, it. Last time you hear Scott said, get away, we're going to lose a customer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's our... Apparently you haven't lost me yet. <laughs> <laughs> we just get, we keep getting sent. Oh, there we go. What was it? Whoa. It does that. Does it? Yeah. It's been a while since I run this bad yeah, boy. Jeez, she's temperamental. It doesn't look like it's down. You got it all the way down? No, it's not down. Definitely not down in the middle. Did I know, you get but the it, did you get the center one out too? I'm gonna go take a look. Let's see if that works better. Oh yeah, that's the money. It's the money. Oh, that's the money. That's the ticket. Iceberg, straight ahead. Let's be like the Titanic and hit it. Don't hit it. Let me get out and get. Oh, there's two. Sweet. Well, he thinks we should be able to get that. No way. Dude. <laughs> We didn't get it out, but I don't think I'm getting that out without a fork. No. We are planting beans. Mark has been planting beans all day, but I've been picking stones, so I probably. Um, yep. Yeah. I got some dirt. I got a little something on my face. You got a little ring, ring around the rosy. <laughs> it's been productive today. We are planting IP beans, which stands for Identity Preserved, correct? 
Yep, uh, non-GMO destined for... Japan? Asia, Europe? Asia, probably Asia. Asia? Somewhere. In tofu and stuff? Uh, yeah, it depends on the protein Soy characteristics. Milk. So different beans are used for different things. So miso, tofu, soy milk. It's a pretty big part of their diet over there. When we were over there, it was everywhere, right? Yeah, a lot of natto beans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're doing... How many acres is here, Mark? Uh, 111, 112. And what was what did you do this morning? 80? Uh, 90. 90? Yeah. So we've got quite a chunk of those beans, and then we'll be switching over just to some more um, conventional... Seed beans. So we're growing yeah. Oh, yeah. beans for other people to grow next year. So seed, seed beans. We haven't grown seed beans for... Well, a long on. time. Um, when we were first farming, you were doing yeah, a lot of seed beans. Three years ago, I think, is the last time I grew seed beans. So. Oh, it was only that long ago? Yeah, three or four. I thought it was longer than that. Um, anyway, we get a little bit of a premium with some of these things. Like, there's a premium with the IP beans, a premium with the seed beans. So, we do try to market. Mark does all the marketing. Um, but he does a really good job trying to spread out risk, figure out risk. Um, and take advantage of some opportunities when when we have them and really that's the only thing we can control we really can't control the weather um, so yeah we don't have a lot of like I don't feel we have a lot of acres like yeah so we try to diversify so we do usually a third edible beans like a white bean or a black bean and then um, a third actually we've been doing mostly IP beans yeah uh, but we're kind of doing, uh, trying to do a third, a third, a third now, where a third edibles, a third non-GMO IPs, and a third seed now, so. So, and our commodity prices have been really actually quite strong, uh, likely due to just the state of the world right now, I would yeah, imagine. I don't know, it's just we're all just in production issues in South America, and yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. a little crazy. It's crazy. We're not, we're not upset about it, but we, we're just very cautious about getting too excited about good market prices because they, they tend to not last as long as bad market prices. Uh, so we just do our business the way we always do it, take advantage of it when we can. But for the most part, we like to book stuff ahead of time. You could, you make money in the field, but you make you make more in the office. You make more in the office, and uh, so that's what he's been doing. So yeah, that's the update with the beans. Good morning, you guys. Long day yesterday, but we are back at it bright and early. I've already been in the field with Jess, trying to get a couple huge rocks that we couldn't get uh, just by hand yesterday. Uh, and now I'm on my way to pick up my trailer. I think today, what I decided to do late last night, if you guys remember, the job I'm most dreading to test out on this thing is weaning because I find weaning really stressful. Bottle babies should be moved and Miles, Miles' pen, just that pen of like six U's, is long overdue to be weaned. So I thought, why don't I test it with a really small group so we're not so frustrated, we have room to move just to see what will work, what flow will work better. And I have Carissa this week and I don't have her next week. So I'm like, you know what? Let's take a few minutes this morning, a few minutes this morning, uh, I like that. That's funny. That's very positive thinking and test this theory But first I have to go get my trailer because I just got it fixed. It needed four new tires four sets of brakes a new connector for my Electrical I think other than that it was just maintenance, but oh my god that poor machine My new trailer Tires brakes dogs Okay, we are going to take out the feeder, take down the dividers. That's Miles' pen there, and this is the bottle baby pen. Now, these bottle babies are covered in ORF, just like the last bottle baby pen, so I'm wondering if it's on, if we need to start disinfecting like this pen somehow. Uh, because the rest of the pens aren't as bad, but Miles, Chris has said Miles has a little spot now. So we just have to be careful handling these guys. We might actually wear some rubber gloves just to have a little bit of protection because it's very contagious to us.
come over to here because they're bottle babies and pets. So they're not scared of us. So that was irritating. But the actual machine worked really well. Unless you have more people. I'd love it if this came back. If that was normal. Yeah. Unless we just cut these off. And they weren't they weren't scared of that. No, they, they just it's just too much. It's just too much room, like between you and me. Well the good news is, it wasn't any worse. The bad news is it really was no better. <laughs> than what I already had. Uh, so, which is which is good. It just means I don't have to tear down my system. I gotta figure out how to make this better. Um, I think at the end of the day, there's a few gates I could probably make shorter just so we can get underneath them. The other thing is, these are bottle babies, so they don't move because they're not scared of us. Uh, I think a normal group would move a bit better just because they are they fear us. That's the one thing with having like, Miles' pen is a, just a pen full of pets. And that's what can happen when, when lambs or sheep are not scared of you. They just don't move. But anyway, at least it was a small group. We know that uh, a small group works better. We, we've always known that. Oof, I dreaded that. I'm kind of glad it's over. Okay, kids. to touch my hands near my face because I took off my gloves which was not wise. I think most of the orth has dried up but there's a few open sores still so I just don't want to touch it. They get a really big pen. Not many lambs. Everyone's gonna ask me what I'm going to do about Miles since he's a fan favorite. He was spoke for a long time ago. Uh, sweet Belinda is going to take Miles. However, he's just breaking with Orf. I'm not giving her a problem that I have, even though she has, I think she might have had Orf as well. But um, I'm gonna let him break with it here get them weaned, get them feeling good, get them growing, and then uh, and then see if she wants to pick them up after lockdown's done, which is just got extended again, so it's looking like we're in lockdown till June 2nd, which doesn't really excite me that much. You found the one spot with no straw. Yeah. So I am rolling now this afternoon. Uh, Jess is planting for Mark, planting soybeans. Uh, I just wanted to show you something pretty cool because I'm just doing the headlands and typically headlands you have to kind of do by hand but we've got something on the, the uh, egg leader called smart path so I'm just going to show you what 
is involved with this. It's pretty cool. I did by hand. I did the first pass and I marked that that was the path that it's going to take. And now it's, I press kind of auto steer and now it's uh, finding it on its own. Now this one might be tricky because I did a really big here. I might have to cancel. Okay, I had a few rough corners so we may have to do a few little redos. So note to self, just slow down at all the corners and especially when it says corner approaching slow down. Having auto steer is really quite lovely. Uh, just a little less fatigue. And when you're looking at a field like this with residue, you can't see where you've been. So I'll kind of show you, I'll show you where I was and where I'm going. And if I had to do this by hand, you would see that it's not as easy as it looks maybe. Okay, so this is the side that I've rolled already and this is the side that I haven't. And you can, I don't know if you can tell in the camera or not, but virtually impossible. So I do like this little guy to tell me where I'm going. I guess I take for granted that I don't talk to you guys a lot about what I'm doing in the fields when I am in the fields and part of that is because all last summer Mark did his own vlogging so uh, we do we do have some older videos on that it's probably legit a repeat of what we're doing this year but every year is a bit different uh, but the practices of what we do for the most part uh, the reasoning behind it stays the same. So I'll give you a little bit of a uh, lowdown of what I'm doing. So when we're done planting beans, regardless if we work the ground or even if we planted no-till, uh, actually the, the, the field that Jess is in right now, she's the one that I was in with Mark last night, that was no-till. So we didn't do any prep tilling for that field. Um, so regardless of how we plant our soybeans, we always come back after with a roller just to pack down any stones that the uh, air seeder might have picked up on its way through. The only time we do roll uh, that's not just soybeans or maybe pre-plant is if we're trying to conserve moisture and we did that yesterday just over there in that field. Uh, so, so sometimes we roll for different reasons but today what I'm doing is I'm following uh, where Mark was planting yesterday. So this is the first field that he planted. I'm just going behind it to smooth it off with the roller to make sure it's completely flat because his combine header, uh, as much as it's a flex head, if it picks up any of those stones, you can really do a lot of damage. I have been on this tractor seat for eight hours. I am so hungry, I'm so tired. Sheep farming is hard work, but sitting on a tractor seat for copious amounts of hours is hard on the body, I must have to say. So I'm gonna run in the house. I'm pretty sure I picked up a couple frozen pizzas from the grocery store, thank God. I'm gonna cook them up, run out supper to those guys. Uh, Jess is planting marks in the sprayer. Oh, it's mad. 